Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Holger, and you may have already heard about House Speaker Pelosi's husband exercising $5 million worth of NVIDIA stock just ahead of talks in Congress around a bill that would have boosted the U.S. semiconductor industry and that company. Or maybe the $1.65 million in stock that North Carolina Senator Burr sold after he was given a classified intelligence report on how bad the coronavirus could become, just weeks before the nation went into lockdown and the stock market crashed. Now, this kind of double dealing by government officials is hardly a secret but how bad is it? The reality is much, much worse, like shockingly worse. An analysis by the Wall Street Journal uncovered more than 315,000 stock trades by Washington insiders in just over the last five years, many of them never reported and many of them made by government officials in the companies they were supposed to be monitoring. For example, more than 200 senior officials at the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA, admitted to trading stocks in companies in the oil and gas industry, some with investments of $2 million and more. That's right, officials at the Environmental Protection Agency buying shares of Exxon, Chevron, and other oil giants. More than 70 officials also reported short-selling stocks, betting against the companies they could manipulate with legislative actions. In this video, I'll take you in to see just how far this goes, how government officials are making millions trading stocks on insider information. I'll then show you how to win this game, how to see who is buying what, and how to make money. Before we get started though, you know I've got to send that special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now this is an absolutely monstrous report. Dozens of pages detailing stock trading and manipulation. So. I'm going to give you the summary on that analysis, what they found, and the specific cases of insider trading in Washington. The Wall Street Journal obtained and analyzed 31,000 financial disclosure forms by 12,000 senior officials, uh, political staff, and appointees in this review that covered five years through 2021 and found more than 315,000 stock trades by officials and their closest families. And again, most of these disclosure forms have never been released or made public by the government. More than 2,600 officials at agencies from Treasury Department to, to the EPA during both Democratic and Republican administrations were found to be trading stocks in the companies lobbying their agencies for policy. So you've got, while the government was seemingly trying to rein in those big tech companies, more than 1,800 government officials reported owning or trading in, in one one or more of those major tech stocks, including Meta Platforms, Facebook, Alphabet, which is Google, Apple, and Amazon. And here you see how many top officials in select agencies owned those tech names. 81 officials in the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, with their handout to the FANG stocks. But that's okay, because then the government broke up big tech and made them pay their fair taxes, right? More than 60 officials at five agencies, including the Federal Trade Commission and the Department of Justice, admitted to trading stocks and companies just before their departments announced penalties and other actions against those very same companies. Now, when the stocks held created that conflict, oh, I don't know, maybe like the Defense Department officials found of shares of blacklisted Chinese companies, the agency simply waived the rules, giving the officials a free pass. And in fact, here, it seems the problem is only getting worse. The chart on the left here shows the average trades per year by officials caught in this research, averaging around 15 trades in 2016 and then building to almost twice that by 2020. You know what that was. It was all those stock trades before the pandemic when the government was telling us it was gonna be no big deal so they could sell out of their stock before the shit really hit the fan. You also see here some of those industries where the insider trading was happening. Uh, the number of stock trades in both tech stocks and drug makers more than doubled from 2019 to 2020 with, with more than 6,000 trades in tech names alone. And it's not just in Washington. The Journal reported last year that 130 federal judges, these are sitting judges, had been caught trading stocks related to the cases they were hearing, leading to a law passed in May requiring disclosures on that. A one case that would be hilarious if it wasn't so tragic for investors. But Michael Molina purchased shares of natural gas exporter Shenyer Energy in six transactions, all within a year of starting his job as a senior advisor to the Environmental Protection Agency in 2018, and eventually the deputy chief of staff. Now, Molina's job gave him an inside view into the administration's push to produce and export natural gas. The trades were all made through a financial advisor in his husband's account in what appears to be kind of a, a weak attempt to cover it all up. Molina's stock trading did eventually catch the attention of ethics officials in Washington. Just a minute, uh, government ethics officials? Isn't that a little like Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny? Do they really exist? Anyway, at one point, Molina didn't file disclosures for his many, many stock trades in energy companies for as long as 12 months. 
Now remember, it's supposed to be within 45 days of those stock trades. Now Molina first claimed that he didn't know he was supposed to disclose his stock trading, and then he couldn't understand the electronic system. What is this guy, 70 years old? I think that's the exact same thing my mom said when I tried to explain the internet to her 20 years ago. When he was fined $3,200 for multiple ethics violations, Molina just refused to pay, said, nope, ain't gonna happen. Then on his very last day of 2021, and again, this would be hilarious if it wasn't the tragic reality of our government, when ethics officials, including Justina Fugue, whom Molina had clashed with frequently in the past, agreed to settle the matter for a third of the initial fine, Molina cuts them a check with the memo line reading, Justina tax. That is epic. But now all this begs the question, why isn't all this illegal? Why are Washington politicians able to trade stocks based on insider information when nobody else can? You know, after all, the SEC has banned insider trading by corporations and inside executives since 1934 and prosecutes approximately 50 cases a year. Some of these you've heard about. Some of them include famous celebrities like Martha Stewart and pro golfer Phil Mickelson or corporate executives like Jeff Skilling, uh, but no politicians. And it turns out until 2012, it was totally legal for Congress to trade on stocks based on confidential inside information. They didn't even have to disclose those stock trades that they made. Then in 2012, it all came to an end with the Stock Act, or uh, the Stop Trading on Congressional Knowledge Act, signed by the 112th Congress. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Nothing changed, but Congress did prove it's good at one thing, passing bills with catchy names. I mean, really, how much taxpayer money do you think was spent by a bunch of people sitting around a table trying to think of words that would spell out Stock Act? Uh, this bill was supposed to mandate that members of Congress and their family disclose anything over $1,000 within that 45-day window, uh, a long lead time already and keeping them from trading in those stocks based on non-public information. The problem is the fine is only $200 per infraction and nobody's watching. In fact, 10 years after the passage of that act, no fines have been levied despite an investigation that found more than, more than 200 members of Congress and their staff have failed to disclose their stock trades. Now I'm gonna show you how to find this information, see what stocks Congress is buying and how to win that game, but staying on top of this means staying on top of the news. For that, I want to personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and the trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the nation. So look for that sign up link below. Okay, so we know this is bad, like surprisingly bad and only getting worse, but then beyond real legislative change, which is never gonna happen, you know, why would Congress pass a law taking away their golden goose? Then the question becomes, you know, how do Main Street investors, how do real investors win in this, this kind of a crooked game? A great resource for following all this is OpenSecrets.org. It's a nonprofit organization that tracks the data on campaign finance and lobbying. Yeah, the saying goes, if you want to know the future, just follow the money. And that's what this site does. You can go to candidates and office holders here on the site, then personal finances for a sneak peek into the net worth, assets, and loans owed by everyone in Congress. You click on assets here and you'll be able to see the most popular stocks held by Washington insiders along with the sectors and industries they're buying. The information is a little dated here, but still an interesting look into that part of Congress that they don't want you to see. The website capitaltrades.com also offers a more recent look into stock trading by government officials. You can search the specific politicians, uh, political parties, or companies to find who is buying what and who is selling. Here we can see what Nancy Pelosi is buying or the 30 politicians interested in shares of Nvidia. Now the problem with these websites and trying to follow this information is, as we saw in that Wall Street Journal report, a lot of these stock trades by wa those Washington insiders just aren't reported. The measly fine of $200 is nothing in a million dollar trade, even if anyone ever had to pay it. You know, even for those that report their transactions, by the time they do, that could be in and out of the stock. So it's just not as simple as keeping up with the politician's stock trades, but there is a way you can still win at this game. And that's just long-term investing. And when the short-term game is rigged by politicians and the insiders, you need to pick your game and play in an even field. While insiders, hedge funds, and Washington might be able to manipulate stock prices over weeks and even months with this kind of information, they can't do it on that long-term basis. They cannot manipulate the broader economy or corporate earnings. That means investing for Main Street investors, real investors, is always going to be about buying those quality companies and holding them for years, becoming an owner of these companies and the cash flows. Now, if you want to see some of those quality companies, which companies to buy, click on the playlist to the right for the very best stocks in eight different strategies. The best index fund, the best value stock, and tech stock, it's all right there. 
Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.